Welcome to Storytime with Andy. Glad you guys are here today. We are going to read the book, The Great Kapok Tree. You see this giant tree right here? I mean, look at the size of this man and the size of this tree. This is a huge tree, right? And this is a real tree that exists in the world and it's in the rainforests, which are a really important place that house a bunch of animals and really important plants and creates oxygen. And um, it's just a really important to our earth. And this book is about the kapok tree in the rainforest. There's beautiful pictures of animals in here. Just loved looking at all the pictures. I hope that Piper D in Leland, North Carolina also loves these pictures. I wanted to say a special hello to Piper today and we're going to draw we always draw here at story time with andy it's kind of our thing so we're going to draw this giant tree on the front and we're going to add in some plants and some snakes and some monkeys all that good stuff okay so have your crayons ready after we read okay you guys ready let's get started the great kapok tree by lynn cherry two men walked into the rainforest moments before the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now, all was quiet as the creatures watched the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great kapok tree. Then he left. The smaller man took the axe he carried and struck the trunk of the tree. Whack! 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 The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. The wood of the tree was very hard. The man wiped off the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Soon, the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great kapok tree, and before he knew it, the heat and the hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. A boa constrictor lived in the kapok tree. He slithered down its trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash the axe had made in the tree, and the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear. Senor, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Bzz, bzz. Senor, my hive is in this kapok tree, and I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower collecting pollen. In this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the kapok tree. They chattered to the sleeping man. Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree, then you come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die, and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When the heavy rains come, the soil will be washed away, and the forest will become a desert. A toucan, a macaw, and a cock of the rock flew down from the canopy. Senor, squawked the toucan, you must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on the land. They set fires to clear the underbrush and soon the forest disappears. When once there was life and beauty, only black and smoldering ruins remain. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf and in a squeaky voice, he piped into the man's ear. Senor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives. Many ruined lives. You'll leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great kapok tree. A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree. Because his spotted coat blended into the dappled light and shadows of the understory, no one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor, the kapok tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? 
four tree porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what we animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen. And Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forest, you'll destroy that which gives us all life. Several ant eaters climbed down the kapok tree with their young clinging to their backs. The unstriped ant eater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought for the future, and surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends upon what you do today. The big man tells you to chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children, who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. A three-toed sloth had begun climbing down from the canopy when the men first appeared, but only now did she reach the ground. Plodding ever so slowly over to the sleeping man, she spoke in her deep and lazy voice. Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? And then a child from the Yanomamo tribe who lived in the rainforest knelt over the sleeping man and he murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us all with new eyes. And the man awoke with a start, and before him stood the rainforest child, and all around him staring were the creatures who depended upon the great kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were! The man looked about and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great kapok tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor. But he heard no sound, for the creatures were strangely silent. The man stood and picked up his axe. He swung back his arm as though to strike the tree. But suddenly, he stopped. He turned and looked at the animals and the child. He hesitated, then he dropped the axe and walked out of the rainforest. The end. All right, everybody, we are gonna draw from our book. I had a really hard time picking a page to draw from here. The pictures were so beautiful. I just loved all of the drawings. Um, so I had to pick something that I thought I could draw. So I chose this page right here. I'll give you a close up. We're gonna draw the base of the tree right here. We're gonna draw this slithery snake coming down it. We'll draw this big leaf right here, and we're gonna make sure to draw this little notch that the ax took out, okay? And then in the back, you can fill in all of these leaves and trees when you have time, okay? So that is what we're gonna draw today. What a beautiful book. Love all those pictures, all those animals. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw this big leaf over here, okay? So it's kind of like a heart-shaped leaf, but like long, kind of like that, right? And it's coming off of this stem. We're gonna bring it way over off of the edge of the page so you can't even see it. And it has some like veining on it. So you can draw one center line and then like a bunch of um, Lines kind of coming like this. Make it look like a big veiny leaf, right? Nice job. All right, so there's our big leaf. And now we're gonna draw this big giant tree. So we're gonna start the trunk up here. You can kind of come off from your leaf and draw all the way up to the top. Make it as wide as you want. Remember, these are big trees. So I'm gonna come maybe like all the way over here but I'm not gonna come all the way down with a straight line. I'm gonna come back over to this side and I'm gonna kinda like swoop it, okay? 
And then down here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of swoop it down. So, you know, a tree doesn't usually stick straight up and down from the ground. Like this one has all of these big different like roots that are attached to the ground. And so we're going to try and draw that just a little bit. Um, so you can come in here and draw just like some big swoops just to show that it's got all of these like areas coming off of it, right? And we'll do one over here that has that big notch taken out of it from where the ax struck, okay? All right, so there is our tree. Nice job. Then we're gonna draw our snake. Now, I know a lot of people are afraid of snakes. I think they're so gorgeous. I don't know how you could be afraid of them. They're so beautiful, but they are dangerous, so you should have a healthy amount of fear. So we're gonna start our snake up here. You can like wind his body however you really want it to wind, okay? Just draw like one um, one kind of slithering snake side over there, but this was a fat snake, right? This is no skinny snake. So we're gonna come back up here and it's gonna get a little bit skinnier as we get down to the head. So you can start it pretty fat and kind of follow it along. And then it can get a little bit skinnier as we get down to the head. And the heads of snakes, um, this one kind of looks a little bit triangular, so you can kind of make it like that, right? You can give it an eye if you want. And you can draw some of the snake markings on it if you want. So you can go along and draw some really cool looking snake skin print on there, right? Get your crayons out and really get creative. Snake skin is so beautiful. There's so many different colors in it and it's so soft. They're not slimy, you know, they're really, they're really cool. All right, so there is our big snake. Um, maybe in the background we'll draw like a vine. There, you know, this was the rainforest. There were vines and plants covering the whole thing. We can draw like a vine back here. And maybe we'll draw a little monkey hanging off of here. So we'll do like an arm coming down like that. Some legs. And maybe here's his head in here somewhere. All right, there's our little monkey. And you can draw some birds. You can draw, remember all those animals we saw? We saw tree frogs, we saw, um, we saw snakes, we saw jaguar, we saw butterflies, we saw um, all sorts of different monkeys, these beautiful birds. So you can come in here and fill out this whole thing with a bunch of like vines and trees and you can just like go nuts on it, okay? But for now, we'll stop and we can write the name of the book on here, The Great Kapok Tree. Hmm, where do I have room? Maybe right over here. V T H E Great G R E A T K A P O K and tree is T R E E, the great K pop tree. Nice job, can't wait to see those. And it was really cool to see how that one tree provided home and food and shelter for all of those animals, right? Everything from jaguars to snakes, frogs and butterflies, uh, sloths, tree porcupine? I didn't even know there was such a thing as a tree porcupine. I'm gonna have to look that up so I can learn more about it. Um, but just really cool to see how important that tree is and to just see the entire world that exists because of this tree. So really cool. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'd love to see your drawing of your tree and I'm going to share a drawing from one of our friends at home. This is from Sabbath and this is his drawing from A World of Cookies for Santa. Um, Sabbath colors along with us at home and so I wanted to show you his drawings and I I'd love to see your drawings too. Just have your mom or dad send them to me and that way I can share them with the rest of everybody else, okay? All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in and as always, stay well and keep reading.